about Ryan's mammoth collection of fiddle tunes. That's one of those two-parters. You hear us talk about the two-part tunes all the time, and that's one of them where you're just using all those single bows and going for it. Yeah, will you play <laughs> some Blue Eagle? <laughs> You're playing some breakdowns Western Flyers style. Yeah, man. Um, on the arch top. You know, I like playing. I like the voice that it has on uh, on some of the other tunes. And worthy of note is, uh, you know, I, I told all this and the guitar players this in the beginning. There's no, there's no denying. It's not, it's, it's not up for discussion that the primary weapon of choice is a round sound hole flat top guitar for this. For this music but there's all kinds of examples where you can see other kinds of instruments being used occasionally and um and like kind of in a enriching capacity for the music and that includes uh tenor guitar that includes um bass like you know there's cool cool jam sessions with al maladu playing electric bass on some of them if you you know on on if you listen to enough solomon family recordings, you're going to hear electric guitars on there too. So that happened and it's incredible. Um, piano, of course, and not as distant as some of those, just arch top guitar. It has a cool voice. So yeah, I like to bust it out every once in a while when we're just fiddling. I love the different sound. It's, it's really refreshing and reminds me of our days in the flyers. Oh yeah. Adam wants to know what the sound difference between the arch top and the flat top is. Uh, Adam and others. So, it's a rounder sound when you have a flat top guitar and there's a lot more, uh, like if you were if you were looking at, at this in, in Pro Tools or Logic or some kind of thing with an EQ, you would see there's just way more going on in the low end for the most part. Um, and this is this is a cool thing to do that we don't often get to do. I don't often, I don't have, often have a uh, somebody to hand them to me, and you can hear in your computer. So just go G chord. I'm gonna go back and forth, kind of rapid fire. We'll go chords, and then I'll play some kind of examples too. 
heard that. Okay, so one of the things that's nice about it is like, well, so so you just it's just a thinner sounding guitar. Not so much. I think of them as having like a nice sort of compression to the sound. So like the frequency response in a, in a, in a really good flat top is is big um, and wide and covers a lot of ground, which is why, again, uh, if you have one guitar to take on the road and play fiddle tunes with somebody, it, it ought to be a flat top because if you get a good example of an instrument, um, both can do, both can do both. But the nice thing that I like about playing tunes is there's sort of a nice compression and uh, the chords kind of become a little bit more compact. So it sounds good that way. The chords don't get away from me. When I'm playing dense chords that have a lot of different notes in them, i.e. the closed notes that go up the neck um, when we're playing like pop and swing songs, um, I like the way they speak. That's uh, that's kind of like the the frequency response to the thing. But the other the other thing that has to do with how it's constructed, you know, it's got a it has F holes, and the transference of the strings vibration to the guitar is happening a totally different way. You know, an arch top guitar is pushing into the body right there because you know everybody see how that's happening. Uh, so it's pushing itself together, holding itself together, while as, whereas um, the reason flat tops need neck sets is because they, from the day they're put together, they're pulling themselves apart, right? So bridges are coming unglued, you know, another, like a, a good way, you know, way of thinking about it, bridges are coming unglued on flat top guitars as they get older and they need to keep an eye on it. Tops on arch tops are sinking if you don't keep them healthy, you know what I mean? So what that adds up to sonically is a tight sound that can punch and project. So the flat top is gonna to give me that big, beautiful, round, juicy sound that everybody loves to play with. In addition to playing that kind of stuff on an arch top guitar, you know, you can cut through a, a big band. That's not going to have a hard time being being heard over, um, you know, a band with horns in it, just because of the amount of high frequency stuff going on. But uh, if you get, you know, if if you, if you take your time selecting them, an arch top can sound round and sweet enough to play breakdowns and waltzes on, and a flat top can be lively enough to sound. See, because I'll, I'll show you this. That's a both these are pretty versatile, so I like to. I like to find flat tops and arch tops that can go in both directions, but that kind of progression on this picture's worth a thousand words, so what's playing a guitar worth? <laughs> You can make that work. Um, you can make those kind of voicings work on this kind of guitar too. I mean, you can play um, all the swing you want on a, on a flat top, but uh, yeah. That I was thinking of um, it, just hearing you play on the arch top reminded me of playing Red Wing together. And I just thought, you know, we have played this camp so many breakdowns. I thought maybe I'd just put it on the table and play all a little Red Wing because um, it reminds me of playing with Gavin. Um, and it's just like actually my favorite song to to play. And so I thought it'd just kind of be a moment like how um, to play a song that brings good memories. So be thinking about that, Mia and Celeste. You're up next. <laughs>
But I'm on this spinning chair and it kept like spinning me all throughout. So I mainly had to focus on not spinning. <laughs> oh, so clear, that's clear intention, focus on not spinning. That was my intention. That clear intention, don't spin. Um, I was trying to imagine actually um, during this part, Gavin always does this really cool walking bass line and it's just like, oh, I could feel it in my head. I love even <laughs> when I'm playing my by myself, trying to imagine the, my friends. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I miss playing with you, Katie. Um, that, that, that bittersweet for sure to just to, to enjoy hearing you play and not be able to be knee to knee with you. Um, Likewise, G. There is hope. Yeah. Uh, Celeste, what's a, what's a tune that, that brings you joy to play? one of your faves um one of my go-to's is always sally johnson that's probably my favorite fiddle tune ever maybe um and it's always like my first go-to tune and uh one of the tunes i learned pretty early just because i loved it so much i had a um a cd with sally johnson on it and i really wasn't good enough to play it yet but I like, I tried really hard to learn it and I learned just this crappy version of it because I just couldn't play it yet. And then my teacher at the time was like, okay, maybe we should actually like learn this song. Um, but that was one, one song that I really just, I wanted it so bad that I just, I tried to learn it on my own. And, um, and I still feel like that today. This is just one of my favorites, so. And then, like Larry said last night, we were like, what are, what were your fiddle contest songs? And he was he was naming them. Like every fiddle player, when I think of a fiddle player, I, I all these tunes flash into my mind that that specific fiddle player plays. And when I think of you, Celeste, I think of Sally J. Sally Johnson. <laughs> I also just really love the key of G. I'm realizing like so many of my, my favorites are in G. Look again. Yeah. Can you hear uh, this, y'all? We'll know it's a Benny Thomason lick. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. Um Yeah. 
down. I love that lick. Um, I have a very happy memory of being outside at a <laughs> being outside at a fiddle contest and launching into cane break just to warm up a little bit. And this guy right here just dropped dropped his bass, grabbed a guitar, and came running over to play it with me. So I have very many happy memories of this tune, cane break. Um, and ironically, Mia, have you heard the recording of Heifetz playing this one? I have. It, it was originally a classical song. Yeah, so many, yeah, so many good times. All right, this is Kingberg, y'all. You comfy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to make sure I'm not going to run into you here. <laughs> no, you're good. Over there. Yeah. I love this so much. Yeah.